Welcome along to our coverage of the 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland. With 530 kilometres to be completed over six stages, only one rider can take home the coveted yellow jersey. Ben Walsh of the Irish national team took it home in 2017, but with seven American, two South African and two teams from Great Britain, the Irish teams are going to have a tough challenge in the week ahead. And it's the usual six and a half kilometre time trial south of Ennistown to get this year's Junior Tour of Ireland underway. The Irish team warming up with a focus on Key and May. Ireland's winning team last year, the individual and also for the team title. Out on the road, 116 starters altogether. Liam Curley wearing number one for the Irish team. And he'll roll in 29th, 41 seconds behind the leading rider at the end of this stage. Plenty of fans, young Clare fans out watching the action. Number two for the Irish team is Shane Donnelly. And he'll roll in 21st place, 35 seconds behind the lead. Another one of the riders here, Michael McGlynn from Ulster. And he'll post a time 10th fastest, coming in at 29.61. Oh. You see the Ulster riders really giving it their all. Looking at the line there in the centre of the road, sticking to it as tight as possible. And a big, big effort before the final line. And rider number 11 is Luke Lamperti from Team Swift in the USA. He'll roll in ninth fastest time coming in, 26 seconds, I should say, down on the leading rider. Mark Smith, number 87 from Leinster. You can see him in the one-piece skin suit as well. And he begins to reel in number 86. That's John Boyne of Lakeside Wheelers. Smith coming in just behind John Boyne. 26 seconds behind also. Seventh fastest on the stage. Well, that's going to be Logan McCain from Lux Sideshow in USA posting a time 22 seconds down on the stage winners. Sixth, and you can see the time trial position here just going through the gears as well. It's uh, Matthew Oliveira of the Hot Tubes team. Visitors here over the last number of years. His time is going to be 21 seconds behind the leading rider. We can see Matthew just coming around that last corner here, crouched over the handlebars on the holds posting a very very fast time indeed coming in in the top 10 and now sprinting in towards the finish it's Andrew Vollmer of the Lux Sideshow team coming in 17 seconds the bike all over the road there a big big effort into the distance a lot of horsepower indeed and thumbs up from the team at the side of the road our fourth fastest cyclist Ben Wright of the Lux Sideshow USA coming in only 8.4 seconds in arrears and rider number 27 is Ricardo Broxham from South Africa a rider who's going to have to be watched during the course of this week he's spending some time over in Belgium with the South African team but he has won over the handlebars a big big powerful rider now coming past the 80 kilometer sign only 100 meters to the finish sign here final sprint as he comes across the line eight seconds down on the lead and third place now coming around the final corner Matthew Riccatello from the Lux Sideshow team over the finish line, 5.3 seconds. And our final rider, rider number 31, Magnus Sheffield. A big, big, powerful rider here. You can see that upper body as one of the power down through the thighs into the calves. Really, really powerful on the big ring here, coming big around zero, the corner here. 31. Still fixed in position, hand on the hoods here. No sprint in towards the finish. He's gonna put in a big, big dig here and seven minutes. 54.52 seconds and Magnus Sheffield from Hot Tubes in USA takes the first Mayo Jean, the yellow jersey of the 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland. Once again, folks, you're listening to Magnus Sheffield from Hot Tubes USA. Oh, I'm really happy with my performance. I felt like I was really able to put in a really good effort. Uh, both Matthew from the US, uh, we're both one of the younger riders. And I'm really happy to see um, that I'm not that I have a, a fellow younger rider doing so well on the tour with me, and the South African also had a very good ride. So Magnus Sheffield of Hot Tubes in yellow, 5.37 seconds clear of fellow American Matthew Ricciitello of Lux Sideshow, Ricardo Broxman of South Africa in third. Into West Clare with a new stage, 94 kilometres all told, finishing in the fishing village of Kilkee. Quite a hilly stage uh, today as well, having a look at the Irish team. So too, the
the Stag Lucan team. Comes up from some of the riders here as they're warming up, including Aaron Wiley uh, of Lucan Monsters, Connor Coleman there as well. And the riders flashing past after this very, very fast start out on the road as well. We can see some of the riders working up and over, uh, Samuel Pugh and uh, Seth Jones of Dorney at the front of the bunch. Riders really trying to get off the front of the bunch, get a sense of the road as well. See who's working well with uh, Samuel Poo, Aidan Geary now caught back by the bunch and leading the riders very much a steady pace. You can see the yellow jersey uh, still sitting the top 10, but at the moment the riders spread right across the road and attacks beginning to come. That looks like one of the Nicholas Roach performance team chill insurance riders. It is its rider Owen McGee breaking off the front. Now certainly they're going to be under team instructions to try and get riders up the road, taking advantage of the TV motorbike there. And a small grab uh, established at the moment. You can see him on his fine BMC livery. Of course, Nicholas Roach behind that team. Nicholas himself, a professional with the BMC team based out of Switzerland racing on the continent the last number of years now two riders going off the front of the bunch through Gildysert main field pretty much together you can see them spread right across the road here so the pace not too high at the moment and certainly when we see the bunch like that the yellow jersey to the fore as they come through the town now and one of the riders at the front of the bunch is Aaron Wade from Lakeside Wheelers putting in a big big dig off the front of the bunch here at the moment but a group of riders marked by some of the Irish riders as well. You can see number two from the Irish team up the front of the bunch and riders still trying to get off the front here. Remember, it's only stage two, very, very tight after the first stage. And rider 97, Samuel Pugh, we've seen him up the road before from Saltair, Cogset. Rider spread right across the road, the yellow jersey probably giving instructions to his team. Just leave the riders out the front as well. The Lux Sideshow riders marking the front of the bunch as well. Coming through Labashida. And now a bit of fun and a bit of horsepower as well. The pony camp at the side of the road. But back to the racing here. Attacks really as well coming off the right side of the bunch here. It's one of the riders from the Lux Side Joe team, Logan McLean, a rider who had a really, really good stage one time trial as well. And a rider to watch. Yellow jersey is having none of it. Rides up, rides through on the left hand side there. And rider number 39 coming through there just being marked all of these moves at the moment another move from one of the cycling Ulster riders coming through there and that's Kevin McCambridge as we head towards Kalimer taking a lovely line in the middle of the road there he'll be ignoring that speed sign likely exceeding 50 kilometers an hour at this moment in time here lovely flat back glances over towards the TV motorbike So as he sets out ahead, you can see a counter-attack coming in. Looks like one of the Lux Sideshow riders indeed is looking to peg him back. It's Andrew Vollmer indeed attacking the yellow jersey on a very, very good day. Both in pursuit and I expect quite quickly they'll catch up. Just glancing to the left-hand side to see who's coming across. An awful lot of work been done at the moment by the yellow jersey. I'd be concerned about that. He does have teammates and he's a lot of riders to put up there. The main bunch back together just past the tall wind turbines in the background and you can see not much movement there today but a lot of speed here at the front of the bunch again looks sideshow riders beginning to attack off the front of the bunch through Kilrush we've got Joe Law from Doncaster Green leading the way here the bunch quite happy to sit in behind him not much of a wind at the moment all together cycling Ulster represented here and you can see the pace has dropped back a little bit the yellow jersey there the Irish team as well on the front marking some moves but yet again there's another attack it appears off the front riders trying to stretch it out now the yellow jersey happy to let the wheels mark themselves one of the Irish riders there in fourth place but the yellow jersey really really strong there hot tubes marking the front of the bunch again but it seems to be quite steady. Now, a lot of the Irish riders off the front. And is this a big move from the Irish team? Kean May is there. Conor Gallagher, K.R. Doyle as well. He's missing his number three at the moment. But the riders right at the head of affairs here. Is this a decision by the Irish team to try and get riders off the bunch? It's Doyle breaking away on this king of the mountains. Remember, quite a lot of hills today. And if he does get an opportunity to get away and make up some time, he's certainly going to go for it here. Lovely position, tucked over those handlebars. 
please don't try this at home. Carragher Holt, Castle beckons in the distance and the Wild Atlantic way as well. You can see he's got a considerable gap at this stage here. The lead motorbikes marking the way. The gap at this stage, certainly 20 to 25 seconds. The leading riders beginning to descend down towards the Bay Area right now. And just confirmed, Doyle clear by 32 seconds going through Carragher Hole. 32 seconds, the bunch will have been notified. That's the chalkboard at the head of affairs here, notifying the riders. Look, side show, perhaps concerned, beginning to send riders up the road. And on the mark is that yellow jersey once again, marking every move here. 32 seconds could be enough to take that yellow jersey from his shoulders. So the chase certainly on here as we pass through Carragher Holt. You can see some riders finding it difficult enough. A great, great attendance here at the finish line here. And here come the lead motorbike. It's coming down to a sprint finish here. And Jer Campbell's voice beckons them in. You can see a sprint finish here on the left-hand side. It's Shane Donnelly of the Irish team taking the sprint ahead of Luke Lamperti of Team Swift and Ian Speckling of the Tempo Hop and Browse Dutch team. We were coming down the hill um, and I heard one of my teammates shouting, uh, up, up, up. Looked round, there was a couple of guys that can pass me. I got onto them, uh, swung right, looked around the coast and couldn't. I heard it was 200 metres to the finish. I haven't, I haven't seen the finish yet. And um, came around, could, was looking around the coast, couldn't see a thing. And then just kind of up the pace and nobody came around me and took it. So the general classification after stage two sees once again Magnus Sheffield from Hot Tubes lead the classification by eight seconds now from Ricardo Broxham. Shea Donnelly taking the honours into Kilkey ahead of Lamperti and Spenkelink in that sprint finish with Alistair Pounder in fourth. Matthew Ricciatello finishing down the field today. So Ricardo Broxa moves up to second, eight seconds behind the yellow jersey of Magnus Sheffield. Ben Wright goes third. Two significant climbs in the Cliffs of Morris stage. Castle Hill skipped this year, but it's still a serious test. As the riders roll out of town behind the neutral flag, Shortly, the racing will begin as they exit this roundabout. And the first rider we see attacking today is Connor Halvey of the Ulster cycling team. He's up the road, appears quite calm at that. Perhaps he's just waiting for riders to come across to him. The main bunch seem a little bit steady today, not too keen. What were the mountains ahead as they begin to open up? You can see a lot of the Irish riders there up at the head of affairs and the beautiful weather has seen beautiful racing conditions for the riders during the course of this week. Now riders attacking for the King of the Hills points include Luke Lamperti of Team Swift USA and Care Doyle putting in a big, big attack to try and get across to him. And indeed, if he does get the effort in, it will be Care Doyle taking those points. You can see what the effort is taking out of him. Indeed, he takes those points. A great fight back by Care Doyle over the top of that mountain climb. And riders still up at the front include Luke Lamparty, rider number 11. We've seen him at the head of affairs over the last couple of days. And now taking an opportunity is Matthew Riccatello from the Lux Specialized team. He came second, I think it was, in that very first time trial stage. Quite a gap he has at the moment. And you can see the team tactics uh, beginning to play out here hot tubes riding at the front of the bunch the yellow jersey tucked in there in third place Riccatello now ahead of the bunch by 26 seconds and he was at 49 seconds behind the yellow jersey Magnus Sheffield on general classification going into today but certainly a rider that will suit the parkour for today a lot of climbing remember three classified climbs today now you can see Riccatello's been joined by Pew, this two-man breakaway, and at the moment that gap is up to 24 seconds, so certainly closing down. And the riders still trying to get out in front of the field here. Hot Tubes beginning to put riders into the moves. Beautiful descending here by the riders, a great opportunity to show some of those skills that we see on the Tour de France. Hot Tubes still in control at the head of affairs here, just marking the riders. They'll allow the gap go out to perhaps 30, 35 seconds or so, certainly under the instruction of the yellow jersey. Their yellow jersey leading Magnus Sheffield in that 
fine yellow jersey for the 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland. Now you can see the race beginning to break up. Some duos up the road. And that gap that he had at the start of today. Two chasing riders are confirmed as Lane Maher from Hot Tubes and Lance Davison from Jornier trying to bridge the gap as they descend downhill. Six seconds ahead of the bunch and now 30 seconds behind that duo of Riccatello and Pew. As it remains, Riccatello and Pew clear with Maher and Davidson still chasing. 30 seconds back to that group. Now Hot Tubes leading the bunch here. The main bunch chasing through La Hinch. as they sweep out of the village now. They'll be contact with that gap, I imagine, of 30 seconds. It's certainly something that could be taken back, but the Irish team beginning to appear at the front of the bunch here, and that's Key and May of the Irish team at the front of the bunch with uh, Ricardo Broxham from South Africa in second place. Kieran O'Sullivan of Comra is there, Liam Curley of the Irish team, and also James Noonan of the Hoppers Rollers team. Care Doyle as well, under instruction at the head of affairs. Rick Catello and Pugh, leading going uphill into Liscana now at this moment the duo working very very well together you can see them in and out of the saddle working up and over little delicate elbow flick there from Riccatello sending uh, Pew through to do his work difference in the climbing style the power of Pew and then Riccatello in and out of the saddle here as well but working very very well together the last time gap that we had for these two riders back to the main bunch was at 30 seconds and the riders edging ever closer to the cliffs of Mower. That sign coming into our screen right now. And you can see the crowd up towards the top of the climb here. And a lot of work to do for these climbers here. They're certainly within distance and within shout of that uh, main field in the distance. They'll be looking to climb, claim these uh, King of the Mountain points, but you can see the gap now at about 200 meters or so. They'll be looking to take these King of the Mountains points. You can see Pew coming through to the front to do his turn. And not too much of a gap here. You can see the marshals at the side of the road. A huge crowd out to watch these riders here. Stage three of the Junior Tour of Ireland. As they crest the top of the climb here, Pew and Riccatello looking to stay out at the front. But it looks as if the gallop is on. Uh, the Lux Sideshow riders coming to the front of the field here. Cycling Ulster represented towards the fore there. And you can see climbers making their way up towards the top of the cliffs of Mower here. And magnificent shots from our TV motor man here as the riders begin to descend down the cliffs of Moher. They'll be well, well strung out now. Speeds exceeding 60 kilometers an hour, certainly at this stage. And the main bunch led once again by Howalesco Citadel and the Lux Sideshow riders up towards the front of the bunch here, seeing the sweeping around. An opportunity for many to uh, take some food on board, take some drink on board also. Remember, little and often for these riders here. So the Hawelsko Lux Sideshow riders seem to be working together. You can see three and three up at the front of the bunch here. And Logan McLean of the Lux Specialized team, Alistair Pounder of Hawelsko as well, trying to break away. But they're not being given any edge whatsoever. Riccatello at the front, marshalling the front of the bunch at the moment as they pass by Burren Castle. Not too far out now from the stage finish at the moment. Luke Lamparty, rider number 11. We've seen him early on during the race and the event itself from Team Swift USA. And also Henry Lutz of the Howlesco team right towards the front. And I think that's Pew once again making his way across to the break. This is certainly a rider that's looking for a result today. Sam Pew has been so, so strong during the course of the day. And once more, we can see Team Swift putting riders up the road. It's Isaiah Chess now making a big, big effort here. You can see the big teams really beginning to send the riders up the road, trying to break it down perhaps for the chasing field. You can see Conor Gallagher now from the Irish team trying to get across, or certainly trying to break away at this stage here. Less than 10 kilometers left for the riders in towards the finish here. And quickly through Corofin. Riders out pressing ahead here. And this is really do or die for the riders at the moment. Looks to me like one of the riders from uh, the Hot Tubes team right towards the front of affairs here, right up right behind the TV motorbike, trying to get as much advantage as possible at this stage for any one of the riders here. 
right down onto the holds again a narrow narrow lead for the riders and certainly again once again the Irish rider up at the front of affairs there Conor Gallagher he's got uh, Isaiah Chas for company this stage one big powerful rider and rider that looks to me as if he could be a mounted climber but it's all come together for the sprint finish here and you can see a lot of work been done by the Lux Sideshow team into the sprint finish here who can take it it's a rider who's going to wait for the moment and it's a big big gallop here you can see it opening up on the right hand side of the road can it be one of the Dutch riders a green sprint jersey coming through and into the finish a powerful sprint finish here from Ian Spekelenk he was third yesterday Ricardo Broxham of South Africa takes seconds and Isaac Prestfield from the Great Britain Doncaster team takes third place yeah yeah I stayed uh, the whole race in the front of the peloton so uh, I uh, yeah it went really fast but uh, happy to uh, take the win today <laughs> And alongside your beaming manager, Hank, you've been here many years. Delighted to win today? Yeah, uh, I'm been, we've been here uh, this year for the 24th time. And we won this race five times. But anyway, I'm always, I'm always looking forward to be here and to do well. Because if they, those youngsters come up to Holland again, they are, you can see they, they made a couple of steps up to uh, maybe... Uh, a pro career. I unfortunately got in a crash on the second KOM when the uh, lad from Ireland crashed in front of me. Luckily my teammates did a really good job today and kept me in the front. Uh, I was able to chase back up and we regained control of the race and from there uh, a couple more teams were really pressing on uh, the finish straight but I stayed in the bunch and I didn't lose any time. A Dutch win for Ian Spenkeling ahead of Broxham, who somehow stayed on board. Isaac Peatfield third, with yesterday's stage winner Shea Donnelly fourth. Still an eight second lead for Sheffield over Broxham, but Ben Wright has slipped down the pecking order. Andrew Vollmer goes third. Stage four centered around the famed Corkscrew Hill, wrapping up in Bally Vaughan. It's a team meeting for the USA talent team ahead of a stop start outside the County Council offices. The morning discussions between Sergeant John Maloney and Sergeant Mark Ennis looking after traffic this year, succeeding Sergeant Joe Fallon, who did this for many years in advance. A great, great partnership between our Garda Corner and the Junior Tour of Ireland. So too, the start at Clare County Council offices. We see Cahirlock of Clare County Council, Councillor Michael Begley, Chief Executive of Clare County Council, Mr. Pat Dowling, and Tourism Officer for Clare County Council, Ms Joan Carmi at the very, very start of affairs here as a peloton rollout with a green jersey to the fore. It's uh, Specklink after yesterday's stage win. Waited his time, the uh, neutral start flag there. Morning. As the riders depart, hot tubes on the front of the bunch. The head of affairs here today, retaining that uh, yellow jersey on the shoulders of Magnus Sheffield. And from the gone, we see some of those American riders going up the road once again. Lance uh, Davidson, Alistair Pounder from uh, Holowesco, and uh, Nathaniel Moser as well moving clear. One of the Irish riders making it across. Liam Curley has joined that trio of Pounder, Moser and Davidson in through Cushing. Really powerful rider, Liam Curley at the head of affairs, just motioning the other riders through. There's certainly going to be a plan of Holowesco are sending two riders up the road today, so perhaps looking to take from the shoulders of uh, Magnus Sheffield as the riders enter County Galway. And they're going to be joined soon by more riders. We're getting word on the radio that there are riders coming across. This quartet working very, very well together for the moment, it would appear. But now confirmation coming through. They're about to be joined by Ben Wright of Lux Sideshow. Henry Lutz from Hollow Esco, so a third rider up there for themselves. Mark Smith from Leinster joining them, and uh, Logan McLean from Edinburgh making a group of eight riders. Not just any eight riders, look at them working so, so well together, up and over. And working really as a team time trial at this stage, I would expect as they come through Gort. As they're sweeping to the right hand side. Now, full use of the roads, remember, rolling road closure, courtesy of Ungarda Siakana, as well as the County Council working with the race organisation. Credit to Alice Sherat and her magnificent team. Also to the sponsors, Eurocycles, Euro Baby, sponsoring this race for its first year. And the riders working through. Remember, Curly, Pounder, Moser, Davison, right 
Lutz, Smith and also McLean joining late on in the day. The eight riders working well up and over. And next up, we're going to see uh, focus in here on Liam Curley. The strong build of Liam Curley, a great asset on the flat roads here at the moment. Big, big, powerful rider. And certainly able to make his way up the climbs as we can see dramatic shots of the burr and captured by a cameraman here. And many waiting at the side of the road as we await the ascent of Corkscrew Hill for the riders here. And again, likely that they're going to take it at pace lest any one of these riders has an eye on the King of the Hills classification. But when you have a group of riders like this, eight riders strong, they're going to pace themselves up it. The climbers go to the front, keep it steady, try and keep those stronger riders in contact as well because they're going to use them the far side, the opportunity for any one of these riders to move up in terms of general classification. And Liam Curley positioned very, very well in the top four here as they ascend Corkscrew Hill. Ben Wright from the Lux Sideshow team sitting at the front of the eight riders here, setting the pace at the front of the field as they sweep around this left-hand bend. He's been left to his own devices now. The Holoesco riders sitting in. You can see them positions three, four, and seven here as the riders ascend. Logan McLean there very much to the fore yesterday, we acknowledged, but simply didn't have it at towards the end. Isaiah Chas from his team getting up and making a big, big dig here. So Curly sitting in second position. And it's the turn of the yellow jersey at this stage. Quite interesting to see the yellow jersey. Math Magnus Sheffield at the front of affairs here. You would have expected some of his Hot Tubes teammates to be sitting and setting the pace at this stage here. Perhaps they put in a big, big effort. And uh, it could be the case that Magnus recognises the opportunity for some of those leading eight riders. And the ascent of Corkscrew. Victims appearing here. You can see the bunch beginning to thin out. Riders going out the back. And one of those is from Lakeside Wheelers. It's John Boyne coming into focus here as they ascend. If he can keep in the cars here, it gives them a much greater chance of getting back into the field as they descend off Corkscrew Hill. But a big, powerful rider. You can see him spinning nicely there. Another rider coming into picture is Jonas Crean from Team Swift. Teammate of Isaiah Chass. And right at the head of affairs here is Lance Davison from the Dorney team, beckoning to the riders to come through. The Holoesco riders do begin to respond and come through. And indeed, it's uh, a bottle that Davison was looking to grab from the roadside, the Preem. Sprinted for and taken nicely by uh, Nathaniel Moser from the Holoesco team ahead of Logan McLean from Edinburgh. A quick descending here by the lead group. You can see the power beginning to come down amongst the riders here. That group of eight still working together. Liam Curley of the Irish team, Holoesco, well represented on the front of the field here and very strategic by themselves to put riders in P1 and P2 and looking to put a rider into the tail end of this uh, leading group of eight riders because it means they can send riders and respond to any attacks from the other riders. Dunning pictures here now we're looking towards the Aran Islands across the Burren and again to credit the great camera work by the team here Blackhead Lout has coming into view as well. These riders will have absolutely no time to look left. Once again, Holoesco leading. That's uh, Nathaniel Moser, rider number 65 leading. And uh, Logan McLean in amongst that group. Really impressed by Liam Curley here, sitting in third position for the uh, Irish cycling team as he leads the descent here at the moment. That crouched position that we've seen so often. Chris Froome copywriting to a degree. Wouldn't advise it at home but something that these riders at international level have practiced and experienced right across the board. You can see the riders just carrying, some of them carrying one, some of them carrying two bottles. Vital that the riders are replenished, certainly when they're in a breakaway such as this. So if a group is under 15 riders, they can't take feed from the team cars behind. So the eight riders just about to be caught. You can see the main field in the distance. The motorbikes begin to move ahead into a sprint finish. And Broxham loses the pedal, but still manages to come across the line in second place. Luke Lamperti taking that stage win. Broxham stays upright, takes second place. And Shay Donnelly of the Irish team claiming third place at the end of stage four. The general classification after stage four, Magnus Sheffield once again retaining the yellow jersey. Ricardo Broxham after that second place today, retains second on general classification. And Andrew Vollmer, as yesterday, from Luke's sideshow, taking 
Third Last sprint, we caught the breakaway with about 10k to go, and it was uh, a fast downhill finish the whole way. And then the sprint opened up with about 500 meters early, and I was able to come up the right side. South Africa rider had a little bit of a bobble with about 50 meters to go, and I was able to just stay in the saddle on the rough roads and uh, make it to the finish line. So I was super excited to be able to make it to the finish line first today in Valley One. Uh, we both come into the sprint there, uh, Connor let out really well. So did Cahar, um, Cahar got me up to the front and then uh, as we came around the corner, I seen the van stood up and had five, six to go to the bike. Um, my cleat unclipped um, my left foot, took me three or four attempts to get it back in but got it back in and had another couple of throws of the bike and got third I think across the line at the finish so I salvaged it pretty well uh, considering Everything that went on today I had a flat wheel, crashed and unclipped, so Friday 13th is pretty good. <laughs> today I thought we'd be very decisive for the competition, seeing as uh, Corkscrew was a Cat 1 with 12 points to offer, but uh, see the break got away early and we were happy to let it go due to the fact that there was an Irish rider in it, there was a Lux rider in it. The only team that was really missing was the Hot Chips team, which meant that they would have to expend a lot of energy or burn a lot of matches trying to get it back. And, uh, thankfully, uh, the boys that were up the road picking up the KOMs didn't have any points to start off with, so they don't have enough to throw uh, me over in the competition. So I suppose I got lucky today, but uh, tomorrow will be the big one. There's four different uh, KOMs, and there's a cat, two cat threes, a cat two, and a cat one. So tomorrow will be very decisive, but uh, if I can manage to hold on to it tomorrow, so there's none in the last stage, and I'll have it. Just describe what it's like going up Corkscrew Hill. Well, today. Um, I have to be really thankful for my teammates, uh, especially Key and I said to the boys last night, uh, what I want to do is keep it controlled until the first part and then really like tick on the KOM towards the second half of it. So Key uh, put in an absolute wonderful shift, just controlled the whole bunch and kept it steady and just uh, the whole thing went uh, exactly to plan and it's only him and my teammates that I can thank for that. A super win for Luke Lamperti, who's also leading the white jersey competition for first year riders. Those familiar names are Broxham and Donnelly in second and third. As you were, no movement in the top ten, Sheffield being well defended by his hot tubes team in the yellow jersey. Another classic today, the traditional penultimate stage finish of Gallows Hill. And the early motorway overpass action sees once again the Lux Sideshow riders on the front cycling Ulster represented. Holoesco, well, they had three riders in that eight man breakaway yesterday. Unfortunate for them, Luke Lamperti taking the stage win yesterday. And Ricardo Broxham from South Africa taking second. The Stag Lucan Cycling Club riders towards the back of the field here. And this being stage five, it is the decisive stage. Gallows Hill towards the end of the stage. So King of the Mountains points, but also we've seen before that general classification really turn on its head on this fifth penultimate stage. And the Cycling Ireland team certainly willing to give it a dig right from the very, very go here. Hot tubes putting riders up the road. As we enter Newmarket, the Lux Sideshow team on the front of the field at the moment. And it's Hosted, Eli Hosted going clear for the Hot Tubes team. And rider number 22 is Kyle Cromie of the Lux team. And we've seen these riders from the United States so, so strong over the last number of days, really enjoying the racing here. But the opportunity to compete at international level and take in the Junior Tour of Ireland is certainly something that they relish on the international front. Now, more attacks taking place here. Bunch pretty much keeping pace, but it's an attack from Seth Jones of the Dornier team. Hands down on the drop, takes a quick glance to see is there anybody coming across. And as always, the race hugely supported at this side of the road, perhaps by future Ross Naman cyclists just taking that climb here. And Seth Jones, I expect, looking to see, has he the opportunity for any company at this stage, early in the stage, the King of the Hills. The gap at the moment confirmed at 22 seconds, so quite steady at the front of affairs here. The Irish team leading the riders, Holoesco, the yellow jersey of Magnus Sheffield sitting in about sixth position here. And the riders, the Irish team, at the head of affairs as well. The Lucan riders there, we can see the riders from 
Lakeside Wheelers as well at the front of affairs here. And more support. Great, great support indeed. Great to see Young alike at the side of the road looking around once more. And remember, any opportunity looking around, he's simply losing time here. But he's on an ascent. And the Lux Sideshow Riders and Holoesco perhaps combining to reel in any potential attackers. General classification, it's a narrow, narrow lead at the moment for Magnus Sheffield from the Hot Tubes team. And it's the Hot Tubes team policing the front of affairs. The yellow jersey sitting in fourth place. And the pace certainly on. More Hot Tubes riders coming up to the front. And with a bunch like this, they'll certainly have to go back to the team cars for uh, refueling at this stage. So Hot Tubes leading at the front of affairs. Do expect attacks coming shortly, though, because we saw yesterday during the course of the stage, quite unsettled, eight riders going up the front for most of the stage, only being reeled in towards the very end. Seems quite settled at the moment. And soon as we see it, more attacks coming from the right-hand side of the road. It's a rider we've seen attack quite a bit over the last few days. It's Samuel Pugh of the Salt Air Cognet team. He opens up a lead. Let's see, do the uh, Hot Tubes riders look to take him back he's a rider without teammates he's here on his own during the course of this week making it quite difficult for himself but he's been involved in the action every single stage during the week and it's Fergal Murphy from the Greenmount Racing Academy looking to get across to him and he's certainly making inroads at the moment hot tubes remain on the front of the field here and we can see yet another rider looking to move clear on this descent here don't expect him to put in great time on the descent here. And the marshals notifying the traffic that there are riders coming through Killaloo. Hot tubes remain on the front of the field here. You can see Logan McLean from Edinburgh, who'd been off the front there, is reeled back in. And quite spread across the front of affairs here. You can see riders in white. That's the Lux team. Also the Nicholas Rose performance team marking any of the attacks here that are willing to go off the front a lot of indecision here and it's early in the stage it's all about gallo hills for the general classification for these riders you can see how controlled it is at the head of affairs the riders spilling across the front of the road and none committing to attacks as we have a marvelous view here across Loch Derg at uh, two mile gate and somebody simply taking time out to McGraney comes into picture here and the gap yet to be confirmed but uh, confirmation coming through it's at 20 seconds 20 seconds for Seth Jones as he comes into view here Holowesco Lucan Cycling Club represented and you can see a wave there and that's Leo Doyle from Lucan Cycling Road Club who's from Jim McGraney so great for himself to be at the head of affairs and the 2018 fifth stage of the Junior Tour of Ireland. So quite a moment for himself and one to go down in the record books. And greetings amongst, I understand, Sweltos of Leo Doyle at the side of the road. Beautiful moment captured. And so too, back to the racing. It's all back together. You can see Seth Jones drops his head between his shoulders. He knows that the GC is yet to be decided. He's made a valiant effort. The main field coming back across as one hot tubes remain on the front. Magnus Sheffield sitting in second place. The question is, can he hold on to that yellow jersey all the way atop Gallows Hill, the Irish team? Lurking right behind. You can see two, three, four of their numbers. They've had a great week to date. And another Lux rider and Holowesco. No surprise there, combining to try and get riders up the road. They're represented still at the front of the bunch and sitting in second place the yellow jersey there Magnus Sheffield he's been there right throughout the week and it's going to be very very difficult a big big ask to see can he retain that yellow jersey up to Gallows Hill great work by his teammates the Hot Tubes team during the course of the week and looks as if these riders are set to be caught so using up a lot of energy in putting in these attacks here as the riders led through six mile bridge by the Hot Tubes team once again question is can they do the work to take their leader Magnus Sheffield in towards the bottom of Gallows Hill and give him the very best opportunity to set up for the general classification win into stage six as the ascent starts here you can see the riders lined out at the front of affairs here but 
one rider we can't quite see at the moment is that of the yellow jersey. The cameras race ahead at Gallows Hill here. This is where the race is going to be decided. The sprint finish yet to appear in our picture here. And it's come down to a handful of riders as expected. You can see them into the last 150 meters or so. This is decisive here. Who can leave at last? Who can leave most power as they begin to accelerate around that corner here? You can see Ricardo Broxham there. It's a very, very tight sprint. And indeed taking the sprint is Luke Lamparty. Second is Andrew Vollmer. Sean Kennedy taking great third place. Matthew Riccatello in fourth. Aidan McNeil in fifth place. And Charlie Page taking sixth place. The Irish team riders coming across that finish line there a great great valiant ride by these riders but it's Luke Lamperti takes first place on stage five of the Junior Tour of Ireland disappointment indeed for the yellow jersey Magnus Sheffield of the hot chips team sustaining a puncture at the bottom of the climb Luke Lamparty sharing details of that stage win. He left it until that last 150 metres and certainly has expended an awful lot of effort into that final stage to take the stage win. by a wasp. Oh, we're going to... Still alive, isn't it? Yeah, stung me right there. <laughs> and injuries as a result of some crashes yeah. out there in the course. It's going to be a tough, tough night's sleep. Super good uh, day out there, hard all day. Um, splits over the second climb, and then the team did a really good job keeping it hard into the front, and then uh, was able to get it over the top of the climb. So when were you aware that the yellow jersey had a problem? Um, I was actually, he was near the front of the group, and then there was splits going on, and then I saw that he flatted, and so um, his team dropped back with him, and then I was kind of in the group, and we hit the KOM climb, and uh, got some points over the top and then rolled a small break down the descent and then it all came back together. So the new man going into that yellow jersey is none other than Ricardo Broxham from South Africa. He'd be delighted to take the yellow jersey. Coming into the tour, I honestly thought like a top 10 is a bit far reached, but uh, I managed uh, like, unfortunately, I never got to check out the first sprint stage. Otherwise, I think the points jersey would have been, I would have been in contention for that as well. I got eighth on the stage. Uh, I'm still a bit of, like, high on points. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm out of my skin. Like, it feels like I'm dreaming. I honestly don't know. Like, yeah, I'm pleased. Um, but uh, this is also, also, all of this is in preparation for track worlds in uh, mid-August so yeah it is I'm, I'm so pleased so Luke Lamperti wins back-to-back -back stages with Andrew Volmer second and Sean Kennedy of the Nicholas Roach team third Ricardo Broxham getting one minute eight seconds on the yellow jersey of Magnus Sheffield due to the latter's puncture meaning Broxham is now in yellow Volmer up into second six seconds behind the new leader Stage six of the 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland, 77 kilometers. That's seven laps of a tough 10 kilometer circuit. They're about to roll out here. Let's see, can Ricardo Broxham of South Africa take home the yellow jersey? So the traditional finish for the Junior Tour of Ireland then. Seven laps around an 11 kilometer course, normally ending in a mass sprint. He'll have to have nerves of steel today. Ricardo Broxham of South Africa, different and difficult racing conditions for a lot of the riders because they've enjoyed spectacular weather during the course of the week. And now, well, the rain has come down. So the surfaces will have changed. A lot of nervous riders as they take the first of many left-hand turns. Very difficult course conditions here today. You can see the rain on the ground, but also quite a variance in terms of the parkour itself. Some climbing on the back of the circuit and straight away, the Hot Tubes team are to the front. And indeed, it's Eli Husted. We saw him up the road during the course of the week. He's two minutes behind on general classification, though, in 36th place. And as always in clear, the hurlers are out practicing, practicing, practicing. Another rider off the front from Holoesco is David Heath. Again, he's gobbled up around the back of the circuit. And I think it's such a testing circuit. The riders, if they haven't seen it before, this can really sap the energy to really demanding climbs here for the riders. And another rider from the Nicholas Ropes performance team, that's Owen McGee. 
taking an effort to get up ahead of the riders but you can see the effort being put into it at this stage six stages into the week-long junior tour of ireland the legs are going to be very very tired as he takes that left turn back towards the finish about three or four kilometers or so up the road bunch taking it easy behind and no doubt more attacks to come once again we can see in picture here that's uh, Lane Marr of the Hot Tubes team, Nathaniel Moser as well, trying to break away. And these riders well used to one another from the American national circuit here. Gentle flick of the elbow left. I don't think Moser's putting in too much of an effort here. You can see the bunch behind. Looking forward, no doubt. Hoping for a sprint stage win. We've seen many of them over the last number of years. But perhaps we could have a duo scrambling off the front if they try and get a bit of time. A tailwind, I believe, on that last section, that tailwind section in towards the finish. Ricardo Broxham at the front, beckoning towards his teammates to come up and give some support because he'd be looking to the uh, Hot Tubes team, expecting some attacks from themselves. They look sideshow, as always, towards the front. Beautiful scenery on the left-hand side. The Irish team sending riders up the front once again. So our leaders, Magnus Sheffield, former yellow jersey holder, Nathaniel Moser of Holloesco, Alistair Pinder of Holloesco, and Lane Marr of, as well of Hot Tubes. And we can see the Irish well, well represented. But these riders really trying to make an impact up at the front of the field. And I expect at this stage, looking for the stage win, perhaps, but the rider's about to be caught back at the moment. You can see Care Doyle there in third position, tagging on to the back of uh, this group here. James Noonan, Logan McLean, who we saw very, very active during the course of the week as well. But these riders just off the front of the field at the moment. Very, very fast. And a duo of riders trying to get across, but unlikely this day away. Looks as if it's going to come down to a sprint finish, perhaps. Magnus Sheffield still having a go, still resolved there towards the end of this week. But unlikely to stay away at this stage here. Those two riders coming, drifting towards our shot. Two of the Irish riders as well. Looks like Liam Curley has been so dominant, but it's coming down to a sprint finish here. And who's going to take the stage? It's Isaiah Chass of Team Swift with Magnus Sheffield retaining second place. Well up on GC overall. And coming in for Ireland, it's Kerr Doyle in third, Liam Curley in fourth, and Matthew Oliveira of Hot Tubes takes the sprint finish from the main bunch here. The final stage, stage six of the Junior Tour of Ireland, sees Ricardo Broxham take home the yellow jersey. So we're catching up with the overall winner of the 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland, Ricardo Broxham. Ricardo, what a stage today. Great excitement into that last lap, 30 seconds to that duo. Uh, how are the team? Well, uh, the team rode themselves inside out today. I'm so pleased with how they went. I mean, we didn't have the numbers, we don't have experience, but uh, we definitely had the hearts out there today and uh, that's what counts it. So I'd just like to thank the team, the staff members, Sunny Jill, she's been a great help, all, this, all the support back home. I just thank you all. Without them, this would not have been possible, and uh, I'll just thank them all. Yeah. It, was a, it was a tough stage, 10 kilometer lap, seven laps altogether, just under two hours of uh, very, very fast racing in different conditions for yourselves. A lot of rain out there this morning. Yeah, there was rain, the roads were wet, we just took it carefully around the corners, and uh, it's probably been the hardest 70 k's in this tour so far, but uh, we managed, and uh, I'm just so happy. I don't think I'm going to stop smiling for the next three days, to be honest. It's been really successful. Um, we've got now three stage wins with the win today, and then uh, the white jersey and green jersey. So super, super good week for the team. Was there much work to set up that duo that went up the road today? Because it 22 seconds into the last lap, went up to 30 seconds. You must be delighted with another stage win, three stages all week. Yeah, it was definitely uh, good to have that move up the road. It wasn't the original plan, but it fell into place and was able to uh, keep sticking, so it was good. The the reality of the matter is that uh, this jersey wouldn't be on my shoulders without my teammates, especially the likes of Keen and Connor and, and Liam who are, has helped me in the mountains. They've just been an absolute asset to me, and I just couldn't, I can't thank them enough, really. Um, thankfully today there was no King of the Mountains points to take up, so uh, it was a real weight off my shoulders this morning. and. Uh, I really enjoyed the stage today because I was able to go about stress free and then just focus on trying to get the stage win today but thank, sadly it didn't uh, come together and I rolled in for third but 
I must uh, Shay must go to Liam here. He rolled in for fourth as well, and Shay got his sixth in the sprint. He's been sprinting really, really well all this week, and you know it's just really good for the morale of the team. If you know you can have a jersey on your shoulders, and then he, Shay was on an out of the points jersey, and it really gives you something to work for. Whereas if you were here with a team that maybe wasn't as strong as the lads I have around me, then I'd say your morale would be a bit lower. But really, we've been enjoying the camp. Tell me, you enjoyed that gallop coming in? You even had time to unzip your top. I am. Um, I was uh, I was uh, happy to be in the jersey yesterday, and I sent it into my team powerhouse group chat, and uh, the lads are egging me on that I need to celebrate having one in the KOM jersey. But thankfully, it was that wee bit in front, and I could get the time to unzip the jersey and celebrate. I mean, we had two jerseys locked up, but we still need to defend them, so uh, we didn't want anything to go away that was close to that rider. So uh, if it came down to it, we would have had him to be able to get the field sprint. So. Eddie Dunbar, former double winner of the Junior Tour of Ireland. You're back from uh, a rest break, but looking forward to the rest of the season. Yeah, as I said, it was a good start to the season. So um, finished up in Nationals uh, a week ago and then took uh, a week off and I went on holidays with my girlfriend and um, just to chill out and recharge for the next part of the season. And I've uh, toured the Wallonie coming up on the 28th of July, so um, I'm looking forward to that and get back into things. Tell me, what is it brings you back here to, to Ennis to have a look at the scenery, but also the cyclists here? The competition is stiff. It is, as I said, the amount of international riders even now coming over there was a South African team here there was numerous American teams um, I mean when I did it there was just hot tubes over here and uh, yeah as I said it just shows how much it's growing um, and it's getting bigger the, I think there was maybe 120 riders yeah. in the race um, yeah and it's, that's a credit to the organizers and um, Alice and the team they keep getting quality teams over to it and bring the standard up and it's um, bring the standard of Irish cycling up as well, you know. An immensely successful week for Team Swift sees Isaiah Chase take the final stage of the Junior Tour of Ireland, but what a week Magnus Sheffield has had too. South Africa's Ricardo Broxham is our winner for 2018. Six seconds to spare over Andrew Volmer of Lux Sideshow, with Matthew Oliveira third and Luke Lamperti in fourth spot. A great tour for Lamperti, winning the Green Points jersey ahead of Shea Donnelly. Cara Doyle wins the polka dot jersey with quite a bit to spare over Ulster's Michael McGlynn, and the white jersey is Lamperti's as well for best first year rider. Lux Sideshow are the team of the year, fighting off the Ireland and South Africa squads. And at the prize giving, the deserved reception for our 2018 winner, Ricardo Broxham, Lamperti, Doyle, and Chas also. Well, it's been an incredible six stages here, 530 kilometres, and your 2018 Junior Tour of Ireland winner, Ricardo Broxham. Well done, Ricardo. Thank you.